What is going on with P. Diddy? Or Diddy. I think his name's just Diddy now. It was Puff Daddy before that. Uh, or it was P. Diddy before that. It was Puff Daddy before that. And before that, it was Sean Combs. This is the, the human being behind the stage presence, Sean Combs. But uh, Diddy had his house, two of his houses raided, Miami and Los Angeles. Uh, and then I saw the report, because people track such things. He had his private jet, leave American airspace. And oh my goodness, is... Is P. Diddy on the run? No, I don't think he was on it after all. I don't know where he is right now or what's going on or the latest. Uh, I am just, the the more I dig into this rabbit hole, the worse it gets. And with the, like that Nickelodeon documentary that just came out and the Epstein stuff that's been happening and the uh, Jimmy Savile documentary from last year about what was going on in England with their Dick Clark. The, wow. This, this is not a rabbit hole that I am enjoying very much, but it is some weird, wild stuff. Bianca Davis with New Friends, New Life. What do we know about Sean Diddy Combs and him being raided by the feds yesterday? Well, well um, thanks for having me. Um, you're right. It is such a, a rabbit hole of information, but we do know that um, Sean Combs had his homes raided by Homeland Security. We know that this is a federal investigation around the crime of sex trafficking. And I think it is important to know that sex trafficking is a very serious federal crime. It is an international problem with 40 million victims worldwide, but it also is a pervasive crime right here in the United States. So that's what's happening. So the rumor mill includes the the possibility that some of this has to do with underage participants and mm -hmm. that that didn't sound like anything specifically toward children you know ch trafficking or whatever are our kids rolled up into this are minors i should say rolled up into this yes as a matter of fact here in the united states the average age that um a child is trafficked is trafficked is just 15 years old Ew. so 15 year old girls are the prime target of this crime, we know that women and girls are trafficked, men and boys are also trafficked, but it disproportionately affects women and girls, particularly um, underage girls. According to the definition, sex trafficking is the use of force, fraud, or coercion to compel someone to commit a sexual act. If this person is a minor, you do not have to prove force, fraud, or coercion. It's automatically a crime. Ew. Okay. Ugh. I hate talking about this stuff, but it is important. So I, I'm not saying I, I thought Puff Daddy was a, an altar boy his entire life. There have been plenty of rumors that have swirled around from, you know, the most recent from Cat Williams and uh, 50 Cent's given him a hard time for years. But mm -hmm. it, it just stepped out of the rumor mill status into reality because his mm -hmm. home got raided by the feds. And we've heard that, look, if the feds are raiding your home, that, that means they, they probably have something. Can we, is it safe to assume that this is beyond rumor and we need to go ahead and start digesting the idea that Puff Daddy may be guilty of some of this? You know, well, we leave it up to the federal investigation team to conduct their investigation. But I will say if the feds are involved, they are working on some information that they have. Um, they take this crime very seriously, thank goodness, because it is so pervasive. And so if they're involved, it is important to take a look at it. And I think it's a reflection. If you take the person out of it, it's still a reflection of what's happening in society, that we've created this environment where um, there is a demand um, and traffickers are providing the supply, this party Ew. atmosphere where there is, you know, the magic formula is really men with money. Where there are men with money and means and stature, then you have instances where someone is pulled into this industry by force, fraud, and coercion. It's often a boyfriend, someone who professes to love and care for you. You know, we're not looking for necessarily white vans in a parking lot. This stereotypical idea we have of trafficking where we connect it to a kidnapping or someone being held in a basement. The victims are apparently moving around in free will, right, by choice. But we know that behind the scenes, something sinister is at play. So this whole situation is highlighting how sex trafficking shows up, particularly in the United States. 
and what a web um, and a complex issue is being is being woven through this crime. What does somebody do if they think uh, that they know a victim? Do you, do you tell that person to go to the cops? You tell that person to go to some nonprofit or some other thera- therapeutic route? What, what do you recommend? Yeah. So um, the easiest way, easiest outlet is to contact the human trafficking hotline. If you go to human trafficking hotline dot org, there is a 24 hour um, number. You can also communicate by text. You can communicate by phone call. So that's the general general way that we or general outlet for people is to contact the National Human Trafficking Hotline. And then in different cities, there are nonprofits like New Friends New Life. We are based in Dallas. We've been around for 25 years. Um, and in different cities, there are local nonprofits who can provide support and resources for survivors. Then if there is a physical, obvious crime taking place, like an assault or anything that's clear to the eye, of course, call 911. The issue with sex trafficking, though, is it is so subtle and it is wrapped in atmospheres like a party or a gathering or going to a strip club. Some of these things that are uh, legal and normal, so it's hard to pinpoint it. But if there are obvious signs of a crime, definitely um, call 911. All right. Well, thank you, Bianca Davis, for this uh, difficult subject here. So if you're in Dallas, you can call New Friends, New Life, her nonprofit. If you're national Mm -hmm. or outside of the area, you can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. If you just Google it, it's the first number that pops up. And uh, yeah. th- thank you very much for giving those uh, avenues of help, Bianca. Hope it helps somebody out there. Ooh, so I don't know how much you keep up with rap. I mean, this is the WBAP audience. So it's understandable if your answer is none. Uh, I, however, am a fan. When I was in high school, I bought the Puff Daddy album. What was it? Victorious or whatever. It was the one that had I'll Be Missing You and... All that other good stuff on it. But, uh, oh, All About the Benjamins. Yeah, that was a big one, too. But since I bought that album in the 90s, there have been random rumors that pop up every once in a while in different interviews. And it's it's been funny because within the, the, the rap genre, I mean, you can basically call it a, a subculture of our black neighbors here, black American subculture. Uh, being gay isn't as openly celebrated and embraced as it is in other music genres. You know, that's one thing that uh, country and rap share. I'm telling you, we are closer together than you think. But the, um, you know, it's nothing being a gay person in pop music. I mean, Sam Smith is celebrated. It's nothing being a gay person in rock music these days. I mean, Freddie Mercury is a god. Uh, Country and rap, not quite as celebrated. So even if he was of that persuasion, which, you know, nothing wrong with it, I can see why he would want to keep it under wraps and not for nefarious purposes. I mean, we're talking about the man's career here. So it's not so much the gay stuff that uh, bothers you. It's th- it's the kids. It's the potential abuse. And it's the stories that you heard from the lawsuit from Cassie. And it's the stories that you heard from Cat Williams. Or, or if you haven't heard these or seen them pass around on your news feed, let me catch up. This is 50 Cent in an interview in 2018 uh, accusing Puff Daddy of uh, putting from the rough. Now, now, Fifth, when you continuously call Puff gay, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? I don't go. No, I don't call. I don't call him gay. I said. Let I, me read this. Let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh my God. Sorry, I can no longer That's help confused. you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Dinner thieves. See, and, and the insult isn't necessarily that he's gay the the insult there is that he's hiding it and that he's living a lie and you know that's unfortunate that people feel that way and really okay that's that's the only part that kind of bothers most of america at this point i mean we're all over being homophobic or whatever for the most part and so you know that um if you find out that puff daddy is playing for the other team probably shouldn't hurt his career it's not going to make you change what you think about him but it's the deception here why, why do you have to lie about it okay you can kind of give him a little soft spot for being in a genre and being in an industry that uh wouldn't look too kindly on that or he runs the risk of it, them looking too kindly on it but the it's the kid stuff it's the kid stuff and some of the other accusations about some of the parties that he had and some of the things that were going on at the parties and it's not just one or two guys saying it i mean it's not just 50 cents saying it 
Uh, it's also Cat Williams. And Cat Williams made a lot of headlines at the very beginning of the year. January 4th, he was on the Shay Shay show. That's Shannon Sharp's podcast. That thing got passed around big time. And if you didn't hear it, let me play the, the two clips that got the most exposure. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It don't matter if you did or whoever you is. All lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. And, and here's what I, I did some digging for this show when that came out. You know, the only name he really said there was Diddy. And that was January 4th. And then here we are, uh, Jan uh, March 25th. Puff Daddy gets his house raided. That is one hell of a coincidence. But what I found out in January when I was doing research for you on this show is that 50 Cent is putting together some sort of, not 50 Cent himself, but he's like the part owner in this production company and this production company and, and one of their many projects is sort of this biography of Puff Daddy that's sort of turning into an expose. And so there's been rumors about that. Uh, the other thing that Cat Williams said that got passed around a lot in that uh, interview with Shannon Sharp is that at these parties, he was describing what happens at Puff Daddy's parties and the the absolute debauchery. It's It sounds like the Bohemian Grove stories that Alex Jones tells and other people that have been to Bohemian Kid Rock has Bohemian Grove stories where they're trying to do sexual things with each other. And I, I, I don't know what this is all about. I don't know what this this pure hedonism i mean I'd, I'd like to pretend this stuff doesn't exist but i'm hearing too many of these stories this is cat williams in january talking about it now author. i've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin i was telling yeah! you about right uh because p diddy be wanting to party and you gotta tell him no oh, you Lord. got to tell him no <laughs> i did see i got the receipts for everything i'm telling you that's why i just yeah, say i'm so freely Oh, man. See, that bothered me when uh, I had to hear that back in January. And, it, oh God, it's so weird. Because, look, I don't care if, if, if you go both ways, whatever. Because he clearly likes women, too. But if you're paying for it, and if you're paying for it with reluctant people, and you're doing Bohemian Grove hedonist parties, and now you got kids rolled into it, and then Cassie sued you, and there's some kidnapping, and you put her in the hospital because you beat her, and there's, there's too much stuff going on in here. I mean, I'm starting to think this guy is just a demon. After uh, after this latest round of information, this is some really disturbing stuff. So my question to you is, I mean, have you heard enough? Is P. Diddley a P. Diddler? Does this make you skeptical and hesitant to let your kids go hang out with people for music lessons or to you know pursue their art or their career? Or God forbid, if they wanted to be on a Nickelodeon show, I don't know if any of us would let our kids near that set these days. It's just, man, how how common is this?